All right, guys, we got one today for you. We got an aerial feeder case here. Already got the cable placed. This is uh, going to be feeding a new network. Uh, get the ladder out there. Get the ladder out and we'll get up there and drop this case and get her in the trailer and get to the splice. And I got this cable already placed. It's going uh, all the way down the street here. We're about 600 meters. Um, it's going to a brand new FDH there. So uh, we're gonna get into this one, spice 24 fibers to feed that FDH so they can go ahead and light up uh, 864 customers. So yeah, let's get into it. All right guys, we got the cable and the FOSC now in the trailer here. Uh, this is existing 400D FOSC. So we got the heat shrinks we're gonna be doing today. Uh, I'll be going over that. I got a 96 fiber cable here. It's a Prismian. Uh, we're just going to be taking 24 fibers out of here and uh, actually 24 fibers out of the feed cable and splicing it onto this new 96 that is running down the street. Um, yeah, it should be a quick build. Uh, should be some good pointers in here, especially with the heat shrink. We got the 1NT here. We'll be doing. Keep that down, get the torch out, and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy this one. If you have any uh, questions or comments, Throw it down in the comment section there. Be sure to smash that like button and let's uh, let's get into it. All right, all right, guys. Let's just get right into it. Already got the cable cut the length. It is a loose tube 96F, as you can see. Loose tube in there, dry as well. So, be a nice, easy, quick stripping. Uh, we got five feet from the ring cut there. Let's go ahead and get your hook laid or whatever you prefer the ring cut at the end and just uh, get right into it so we're just gonna do our ring cut as per usual boom boom rotate it to snap it off boom boom there it is throw that away I like to uh, also give a little nick in there to help start the uh, the rip cord, as long as you don't cut the rip cord, but that's okay. It'll still work. So I'll do that for both sides. Get them both started. So I'm not running into any nonsense, breaking rip cords and whatnot. Throw the old cut proof glove on as always. And uh, yeah. Straighten the cable out, grab your rip cord, as long as you got good grip on it. There we go. Pull that all the way to the end. Got those rip cords pulled now. We can go ahead and uh, cut the sheathing off here and get into it. I'll get you guys at a better angle. All right, a little bit of a better angle so you guys see what's going on. Uh, I'm gonna leave a little bit of rip cord on there in case something goes wrong. We have to get back into this cable. Highly unlikely, but a little safety precaution that you may or may not have to use. So we'll go ahead. Pop the sheathing off. Do, 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 do like so. Get the other side out. There we go. Get back here. Cut your sheathing off at your ring cut mark. You can take all this. I don't even know what you want to call it. it kind of seems like moisture tape, but it doesn't at the same time. So we just cut it all off like that. Uh, and, uh, 
go ahead and bunch that up, throw it in the trash. Now once we have that done, we can get back to our hook blade, seam ripper, whatever you want to use. All right. Go ahead and get the remaining moisture tape slash, I don't know, binder tie, I guess you could call it. Taken off here without grabbing any of the tubes. Once you have it, you can just simply work it all the way off. Fill that out. Come back down here, clean up the little bit of excess you have. Go ahead and keep a nice clean ring cut area. Like that. Ooh, got a little bit more there sneaking in. It was sneaking in there. Do, do, do. There we go. And uh, here, I'll move you guys again right quick so you can understand the uh, helix here. dialed in there we go so as you can see there's a flat part that's the helix okay we have it twisting around the strength member comes to a flat spot starts twisting the other way comes to another flat spot so what you're going to want to do find the closest one to the ring cut put that away first and you can just roll it like so until you get to your ring cut mark or until you get to the next flat spot, right? And then you're gonna do it again. This time, opposite direction. Like so. And up at the top for one. Oh. Now we can go ahead and split these tubes off that come down here get rid of these other little moisture strings that are in here like that throw those out strength member give it a chomp move it like five six inches there so there we go this is now opened up we can go ahead and add a ground here bond clamp get the cable grounded and cleaned up on the end there and then we can go ahead and start getting this into the case and working on the heat shrink all right now we have our bond clamp ground attached all right actually i seen in the comment section one of the guys asked me why don't i just use the ones that come with the FOSC? and that's just because of the customer's requirement um they don't they want it to be a solid and like this not a hook end like the other ones let's see if i got one here you can see these are the ones that come with the fosk and they just have a little hook in there right these are the ones that are specifically ordered where there's just a solid solid lug on the end there and it's because of the customer's requirements that's what they want they don't want the hook ones all right i had a guy in the comment section asking why it's just customer requirements man anyways moving forward we got our heat shrink port back here. We're gonna have to cut it open and uh, get it prepped and ready, sanded up, scuffed up so that we can go ahead and put the heat shrink on and get this cable sealed inside of this 400D FOSC. So I'll get you guys set back up on the tripod so you guys can see how that goes. All right, so we have our cable stripped. Now we need to get into the next port that's available. This is the feeder port with two cables running in. Distribution, 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 distribution. So we'll take the next distribution port. Even though this is a feeder case, this is strictly running between FTH's patch panels and the CO, all right? Um, there's live customers in this case. It's a live FOSC. I do have a thread in with the customer. So I am allowed to be in here and poking around. But anyways, moving forward, I'll show you guys how I cut these off, scuff them up, and uh, get the cable prepped and ready to be sealed in there. So let's go ahead. Um, some guys will use a big pair of cutters on here. 
once again I like my hook blade so I'll go ahead on the end here get the old tip stuck in there just the tip then I work my way around it okay be careful when you pop out like that too it's very very likely to cut yourself so do that far on that side it's a little tougher when you um, are jumping into an existing case like this because usually I'll just put this right in my lap pop all the ones off I need scuff them up and get ready to it but I'd be more a little more gentle since this is existing live fosk so go ahead work our way around best we can about halfway through there once I'm halfway through see if I can get it in this side it's a bit of an odd angle yeah bit of an odd angle it's okay though that is okay time with ourselves here oh the old heat shrink's coming to say hello <coughs> oh she's getting a little hot in here from the heater but move forward Bing, bada, boom. Okay. Now we have the port open. Next step, you want to come to the package that came with your heat shrink. Okay. So it all comes as a package. This is your heat shrink. It uh, has arrows on it, indicating that that is the direction it will be getting glued on. You can also tell by the side that's going to be stuck to the case doesn't have glue all the way to the end here if you can see that okay if we flip it over you can see there's glue all the way to the end and your arrows you know pretty straightforward so what you're going to want to do is take that slide it onto your table like so okay arrows facing towards the case get that tossed to the side Inside your bag of goodies, you'll have some sandpaper. Okay, come in here. You're gonna want to rough up that port. Let's see if we can get a good view for you guys. But let's go ahead and start sanding it. And the reason we're doing this is because we want a rough surface for when this we heat this glue up on the heat shrink, so that it has a a good surface to actually stick to. If it's just smooth like this, the glue's not gonna have anything to really grab onto. So by roughing it up, we're now giving it um, a different type of surface so that it can actually stick and not have any potential leaks. So we'll just go ahead and get this done. scuffed up another little tip I like to do here too just to 
really make sure we're never gonna have a leak. So I'll even rough up the inside a little bit because when we do heat shrink this down, the glue is gonna spread to wherever it possibly can get to. And sometimes it'll spread a little bit to the inside. So if you rough it up on the inside as well, then that'll really give a great seal at the end. I even like to give the end here just to make sure, you know? All right, now that that's roughed up, we can come measure up our cable. As we can see, the cable is gonna be lining up right about there once we insert it in there. So we also have to rough the cable up because once it's in there, some of the glue is gonna be getting on it as well. So we want a great seal. So go ahead and sand this up as well. Come on. nice rough surface there you can sauce that to the side we can go ahead and uh, get our cable entered in here push it through right quick line them all up All right, I'm liking the look of that. So, now we can go ahead and get a little measurement here. Um, I'll just use the center sharpie for now. So now we know that's where our cable's gonna be sitting, okay? I wanna see where the heat shrink's gonna be ending. I'm gonna make a little mark, just ever so slightly, maybe half a centimeter on the inside of the heat shrink, but on the cable, okay? The reason I'm doing that is because it's a part of the requirements that you're gonna have to put this piece of tin tin tape, I guess you call it. And it's just to help protect the cable from when we're heat shrinking it, okay? You see it's on these existing ones already. Um, so in order to have it placed properly, we're gonna line up this blue line on the tin tape with our mark we made. So it's as simple as this. I got a little trick for this too. So it doesn't come out looking like these, these ones over here that someone else did. But line that blue mark up. All right. And just work it around consistently like so. That's on there pretty smooth, but another little trick for you guys is if you want to make it real smooth and make, make it look real quality, go ahead and take your, your marker and uh, just run it along it and help work out any of those little air pockets or kinks or crunkles or whatever you want to call them. go now it's looking nice and smooth and on there very quality so right here boom boom now we can go ahead and get the heat shrinker but before we do we'll make sure we actually get this cable strapped in here with the strength member so that we don't have it moving around sorry about that don't have it moving around um yeah let's switch up angles for you guys so you can get an idea of what i'm doing with the strength member and then we'll jump back to back to this side so you can see how I heat shrink it. I'll be using a torch on this. Some guys use heat shrink guns. 
um, heat guns, whatever, whatever you have will work, just as long as you don't burn through your heat shrink. But I like using a torch, just, just what I like. All right, let's get it. Right, so there's our strength member. All right, and these are our strength member holders. So you're gonna loosen them up, loosen one up. So, and then what you're gonna to wanna to do, get your strength member placed under it and tighten it back down. Like so. Okay. Right. Then go ahead and cut the excess off as well. Like that. And now our cable is secured in there. Actually, you know what? I want a little bit farther in there. We have our cable secured now. Bottom clamp can hang off to the side until we're ready to connect it to the ground. Now we can go ahead and get to the heat shrinking. Let's get you at another angle. All right, guys, so we got our torch out here. I just like to uh, grab some old, well, not old tray boxes, but some spare tray boxes and get the case elevated here so I can work on it with the torch. But uh, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get into this. Actually, you know, let's move this ahead a little bit. So I get a better view on it. How's that looking? Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, we can just go ahead and get the torch going. Now, you don't want it too, too blazing like that. You want to be gentle with it, okay? And don't hold it in one spot for too long because you can just burn holes right through this and there goes all that heat shrink work. You're going to have to cut this off do a zipper or put a new one on, it's, it's gonna be a nightmare and a big waste of time, okay? So, I'm just gonna start at the back here, at the front, actually. Oh yeah, she getting a little round. Remember, remember when you turn these upside down too, if you're using a torch, and you shake it, they tend to get a little rowdy. So, here we go. We're just gonna slowly work it back and forth. Heat shrinking her down. Okay. Oh, oh uh, why is oh, she getting her out of Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a sec torch is acting up. We got the torch running again properly. So we're gonna get in here, start melting this down. Alright. Torch is acting up, boys. Maybe this is a sign I need to get a heat gun, huh? That's for all you guys in the comment section telling me I need a heat gun. I guess y'all be right, man. Or I just need a better torch. This torch is acting up. That's okay, though. We will make it work. Oh, apparently not. All right. Back into it. Uh, yeah, slowly you just work your way around. 
heat shrinking it equally. Little green dots, they're kind of like a, um, what would you say, a verifier, I guess. Um, once the little green dots disappear, oh, jeez, boys. I don't like being upside down, I'll tell you that. Um, once the green dots disappear, that's like an indicator that you've heated it down sufficiently, like so. Just don't be burning through it, all right? So, just go ahead and shrink this on there right quick. Sorry. All right, this is a bit of a better angle, not only for heat shrinking, but uh, for you guys to see as well. I've ever used. Hands down. Never struggled this hard with a heat shrink in my life. Maybe actually the first one I ever did. A bit of a struggle. But we'll make it happen. Honestly, brutal, you guys. I never, ever had to struggle this hard with a heat shrink and a torch. This is well, at least you guys are getting to see that uh, it's all not just simple and easy to make it happen. Sometimes you'll run into issues like this a crazy torch that's trying to consistently burn holes in your heat shrink. But hey, that's what, uh, that's what this job's all about. Being able to think on your toes and come up with solutions.
just doesn't want to pick. But... Working at it. Yeah, I'm buying a heat gun after today. That's for sure. Or a better torch. Probably a better torch. So, just keep heating it all the way around. Do it equally. Start seeing that there's a bit of glue oozing out the end there. We we'll finish it up. There we have it, you guys. That is the heat shrink. Now, before moving it around and messing with it, you're gonna want to let that cool off. Okay? Here the focus was messing up but let this cool off because it is very hot right now okay and you want this to to seal properly so by letting it cool off and not moving it right away you're not gonna break the glue and have little say gaps and whatnot in there because the glue is still super hot right like this is extremely hot to the touch so go ahead let it cool down but that is the premise of it now as you probably can see we had major issues with this one using this torch with it fluctuating on its uh its flame so still we're able to get it done um but i would suggest for anyone newer out there or even experienced it's probably better you go with a heat gun or at least a quality quality torch not your 20 dollar torch at the old Home Depot or whatever. Um, anyways, moving forward, we'll let this cool down and we'll jump to the next scene where I'm stripping the old tubes here and doing a little ribbonizing and we'll go ahead and get it spliced up. See you in the next clip. Before moving it around and messing with it, you're gonna wanna let that cool off, okay? Here, maybe the focus was messing up, but let this cool off because it is very hot right now, okay? And you want this to, to seal properly. So by letting it cool off and not moving it right away, you're not gonna break the glue and have little, say, gaps and whatnot in there because the glue is still super hot, right? Like, this is extremely hot to the touch. So go ahead, let it cool down, but that is the premise of it. Now, as you probably can see, we had major issues with this one using this torch with it fluctuating on its uh its flame so still we're able to get it done um but i would suggest for anyone newer out there or even experienced it's probably better you go with a heat gun or at least a, a quality quality torch not your 20 dollar torch at the old home depot or whatever um anyways moving forward We'll let this cool down and we'll jump to the next scene where I'm stripping the old tubes here and 
do a little ribbonizing and we'll go ahead and get it spliced up. See you in the next clip. All right, all right guys, so that's cooled down. We got ourselves set back up. We got our 96 here. We know that in this 96, we're only using 24 fibers, the first two tubes, okay? Blue and orange. So the rest of our tubes here are actually dead. So we'll just get them out of our way for now, off to the side. And then we do know that the fibers or the tray we need to be entering into is this tray with, look at that, two tubes ready for us already. So go ahead and pop the lid off. There you go. Get that somewhere secure. Right over there, apparently. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to make some ring cut marks for our tubes. Like so. It's about inch. Inch away from the back of the tray here, okay? Pretty much right to the little lip there. So, go ahead and make our ring cut marks. We can go and find our ring cut tool. On sec here, we got a ring cut tool. Um, if it's a brand new tool, just come to the end. A tip for you, check out the blade depth. As long as it's not cutting through it, good to go. So, come down here, ring cut our two tubes, like so. Boom, that's the ring cut. Pop them off, pull them off to the end, like that. Throw those tubes away. Now, as you can see, there's some moisture tape in there. Quick little side note. Sorry if I sound funny today and I keep sniffling. Got the old uh, Christmas sickness there, so just gonna have to deal with it. Um, there we go. I actually wasn't gonna work today, to be honest. Wasn't feeling the greatest, but there's a uh, kind of like emergency work right now this stuff was uh supposed to be live about a month ago just found out the other day of that but that's okay we're out here now so we got that sorted boom boom get ourselves some felt or yes some felt this little bag should have some goodies in it there we go take some of that cut a nice little i guess an inch piece off there like so, that can head out, and we're gonna go like this, find out where we want it, right there, and apply. Bada bing, and bada boom, okay. Oh, uh, we'll you know what? Our bag of goodies over here should have a couple little mini straps in there. Dude. Look at that. A couple of these little guys. Get that strapped in there. This. secured in there we can get a nice little measurement here before we ribbonize these measure them out so that they're not uh not having anything funky happen when we splice it and go to put it away and it doesn't fit in the tray well so as soon as you get a nice little measurement there to the top chip let it snip i have to do it with this one as well I really don't know what they had going on here. Looks like they did two fall wraps. It's okay. But we'll measure this out the same. So, one way around to the middle of the chip and snip just like that. Throw those out. So, there we go, you guys. We can go ahead and pull this back out. We can get to the ribbonizing. Do, do, do. All right. These kind of seem almost a little bit different. Right? No, they're good. There we 
they're good. There we go. Okay, I'll get the ribbonizer out. We'll ribbonize them quick, splice them quick, and then uh, put this away and get some final pictures, and this location's done. It is an aerial case, so we will have to get back out there and get it hung back up. I actually have two more locations to go and jump into after this as well. So, needless to say, it's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon right now. It's going to be a late evening. But, hey, it's all good. It's all good. We will make more videos here. Sorry you guys haven't gotten any videos recently. The past month or so, it's just big push before Christmas, as always. And then a little bit of Christmas holidays. So, so I take a little break, step back for a bit, you know. Enjoy the holidays for once. So, Sorry I haven't been uploading, but new year here we got uh, a lot of builds on the go so we're gonna be uh doing as much uploads of videos as possible a lot, a lot of shorts will be coming in um but also a lot of content videos so uh stick around hit that subscribe button if you like this content all right let's get to it all right guys well there you have it that's how you heat shrink a 400 defos entering a new new cable in there uh, it's nice and cooled down now. Good to go. Um, yeah, it's not not too difficult. There's just a few steps you really gotta make sure you're paying attention at. But other than that, pretty simple process. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the finishing this up I'm with my old trailer. So I got weird weird camera footage with the light on in here. So we'll just uh, make this video about the heat shrink. And then yeah, there's gonna be some more videos coming out of all the original stuff, such as ribbonizing, splicing, doing other threat cases, placing cabinets, you name it. We got tons going this year. So uh, yeah, stick around. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.